This video is simply showing you how I wired my 30 amps up to my trailer. If you get this wrong, it can be fatal. If you are not sure of yourself, then you need to consult an electrician. Today, I'm going to show you how I put my 30 amp short power connections into my pop-up camper. I started this process by locating the point where I wanted to drill a hole in the side of the trailer for the 30 amp plug-in. I used a three inch hole saw and drilled all the way through from the outside skin to the interior of the trailer. Next, we had to hook up some 10 gauge stranded wire to the plug-in connector. The positions for the wires in the plug-in connector are color coded. So I put the green wire in where the green wire is marked. I put the white wire in where the white wire is marked and I put the black wire in where the black wire is marked. I'm using what is called 10-2 stranded wire that I got from Lowe's. I had to strip out the outside insulation from the wire and get it down to the white wire, the green wire, and the black wire. Before I could stick each wire into the plug-in, I had to strip off about 5 eighths of an inch of insulation from each wire. Once I got all the insulation stripped, I stuck each wire in its color-coordinated spot, and I used the side screws on the plug-in to clamp down on the wires. Now we're ready to run the 10 gauge wire inside and seal this 30 amp shore power plug into the outside of the trailer. I realized when I drilled the hole that my walls are hollow. And so in order to add a little bit of strength to it, I slid in some pieces of two by two to fill in the gap between the inside wall and the outside wall. This would add a little bit more strength for when I put the screws in that hold on the connector to the outside of the trailer. Now I take some butyl rubber tape and roll it into a thin bead and press it on all the way around the housing of the plug-in connector. The aluminum siding on the pop-up camper is not necessarily smooth. It has a lot of factory design creases in it. So this butyl tape will fill in the gaps between the plug-in connector and the aluminum skin. This butyl rubber tape is very sticky. So wherever that 30 amp plug-in sits, that's where it's going to be. Once the plug-in is in position, I put the four screws in to hold the plug-in to the side of the trailer. Now I'm hammering a clamp over the wire to provide some strain relief for the wire. Next, I hold my breaker box up in the location where I want it and mark the screw holes with a pencil. Then I drove two screws in at the top to hold the box in place. In order to get the wires from the outside of the box to the inside of the box, I had to knock out three plugs on the outside of the box. There's two metal plugs at the top I had to knock out and one plug at the bottom. Once the plugs are knocked out of the box, then I can install strain relief clamps in each hole. These clamps clamp down on the wire to make sure the weight of the wire is not pulling on each connection. Now I hang the box up and drive the final third screw in the bottom and tighten the two screws at the top. And the box is now mounted on the inside of the trailer. And it's time to run that 10 gauge wire from the plug-in to the inside of the box. I'd stripped enough wire to have a strand of green wire, white wire, and black wire. And I stripped off 5 eighths of an inch of insulation so that I would have metal to contact the other wires. Now that I have the 10 gauge wire clamped down, I'm going to attach the white wire to our common bar on the right side. The black wire is our hot wire and we only have one black wire but we have two terminals it has to hook to. So I made a bridge wire out of 10 gauge wire here. It's gonna bridge from one breaker screw to the other breaker screw. 
I'm trying to give you the best shot I can of this. It's very difficult with two hands, a screwdriver, a pair of pliers, and a camera all shoved into one spot trying to tighten down one wire. Now I can run the 12 gauge wire from each electrical plug-in box to the breaker box. Each one of these wire assemblies has a green wire, a white wire, and a black wire. You'll see I will run the white wire from each circuit to the bottom of that common bar on the right. The black 12 gauge wire from each electrical box hooks up to a breaker for that electrical circuit. So I'm going to have a left circuit and a right circuit, and I'm going to have a left breaker and a right breaker. The left breaker will attach to the black wire from the left circuit. The way this breaker installs is the horizontal clamps clamp on the bar at the bottom. You have to push in with a little bit of force. Then the vertical clamps will clamp at the bar at the top. As I'm installing the breaker, I have to make sure that there are no wires underneath the breaker that are going to get pinched as I'm pushing the breaker in. After the breakers are all installed, I join all three green wires together and used a wire nut to make sure that they stayed together. Now that I'm through with the breaker box, I can move on to the individual circuits that lead to the plug-ins. Run the green, black, and white wires into the box and clamp down the wire on the side of the box. Then strip 5 eighths of insulation from each wire. The green is ground and it's going to be clamped underneath the green ground screw. The white is common and it's going to be clamped under the silver screw. When the black is hot, it is going to be clamped under the gold screw. After all three wires are connected to the outlet, 
then you can line the outlet up with the box and screw the outlet to the box. One thing I added in the interest of safety is I wanted to ground the box to the frame. And so I added a self-tapping screw on the side where it would not touch any of the wires. And I would run a green ground wire from the side of the box to the frame. I did not run a ground wire from the frame to the other three ground wires because they would be grounded through the outlet on the 30 amp plug-in. To install the breaker box front face cover, it hooks on at the top and then you swing it down and put a screw in at the bottom. In order to test the electricity, I had to plug the trailer into a 110 outlet. So I had 110 15 amp extension cord and I used a 110 15 amp adapter to plug into my 110 30 amp power cord. I would not suggest doing this if you're going to test air conditioning, you need a heavier extension cord for air conditioning. The 30 amp power cord plugs into the trailer and twists a little bit to the right. And then I tighten the ring around the outside of it to keep it plugged in. To test each circuit, I use an electrical tester that I get at the big box stores. When I turn on the breaker, you should see two yellow lights on the right if it's wired incorrectly. And the test is showing that both circuits are wired incorrectly. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. There's more to come.